Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com where we show you how to make smarter trades. In today's video, we're gonna go over the Analyze tab for Thinkorswim here. And so the whole idea behind this video is just to get you familiar with what the Analyze tab is, how everything's kind of set up and laid out. We have other videos that show you how to analyze trades and set up simulated trading that come right behind this. So you'll wanna check those out as well. But again, this is just gonna get you familiar with actually using the analyzer. Uh, so inside of your Thinkorswim platform, as soon as you are looking at any tab or trade, you can always go over to the Analyze tab here. And under this Analyze tab, there's a lot of different stuff in here. And so what we're gonna mainly cover here is basically the risk profile that's in here. So inside of here, you have probability analysis, economic data, think back feature, which we've talked about in some of the e earlier videos, just kind of like showing you the layout of the actual system. And again, uh, we'll do the simulated trades in another video so that you can see how that kind of works. But inside the Analyze tab and under Risk Profile, this is where you're actually going to start building out some of these option strategy payoff diagrams, either for current positions or for simulated trades before you get them on. In this case, what we're doing is we're just looking at a real OIH trade that we have going on right now. Uh, so you know exactly what we're doing. So this is a real live trade that we have going on at the time that we're doing this video. So let me give you a layout here of a little bit how things kind of work here. Uh, first, you have your ticker symbol that you want to choose. So again, you can type in the symbol that you want. You can also do the drop down menu here and choose from a position in your portfolio. So any active positions, you can then just easily toggle back and forth between those. So like if I want to do EWZ, I could do that or I could go right back to my OIH position. You could either include or exclude commissions. Here, you want to do these lines. Now, these lines I'll show you here in a second, but the lines are basically the expiration dates that you can set up, set up the volatility steps, um, uh, day steps on PL lines. What we usually do is we usually do expiration of one or two expirations out. So plus one will be the next monthly expiration, plus two will be only looking at the next uh, two monthly expirations. Um, here you can do PL on the open, PL on the day. You can actually chart your delta, gamma, theta, vega, etc. We usually do PL on the open. That's just so we know, okay, hey, how much money have we made overall since the position has been open here? And I'll go through this here in a second. Uh, probability mode, we can do probability of being in the money, probability of being out of the money, probability of touch, etc. So we always do in the money because that's always at expiration. Uh, that's important for us because we just want to know, okay, what's the likelihood that the stock ends at expiration inside of our range or outside of our range, whatever the case is. And then we can actually calculate our own probability range here. So it's set as a default to a one standard deviation probability range. No surprise there, 68 um, percent on the probability range. And then we can set the probability date as whatever date we want in the future. So if we want to move these probabilities out to a different date, it's naturally going to default to basically the next day after expiration. We could then just move it out to say the May contracts, or we can move it out to the June contracts or whatever you end up you know, feeling comfortable with as far as that goes, okay? So there's a lot of different ways that you can set up just like the top half of things. Most of it is gonna to default to, again, that first uh, day that you have or that first contracts that you're looking at for the particular ticker that you pulled in here. But again, you can kind of set this up and customize it, you know, as much as you want. Now on the actual chart itself, down the left hand side, this is gonna be your PL. So this is gonna be your dollar that you've won or gained at any particular price on the actual chart. So here you can see we have our zero line that goes across the entire payoff diagram, right? This is very familiar with most option strategy payoff diagrams that you might see on our website. And then obviously anything above that line, we make money, anything below that line, we lose money. You can see this will adjust naturally with whatever strategy you're looking at. Now down the bottom half of your of your chart here, this is gonna be your actual stock prices. So whatever stock you're looking at, this bottom half will adjust. The dotted line in the middle of the chart right here is gonna be your at the money or current market pricing. So in this case, at OIH right now is trading at 29.46. So that's gonna be that dotted line right down the middle of your payoff diagram. The two dotted lines to the right and left are gonna be what's called a price slice. So hopefully I'm saying that clear enough so you guys can see it or hear it, but it's a price slice. So these are pre-designated price points within the payoff diagram so that you can see how your strategy might 
win or lose money based on predetermined price movements in OIH. Now these are very cool because you can adjust and move them if you want to, right? And look at different pricing. Or what you can do in here is you can set slices to the chart, okay? You can set slices and let me just actually move this over here so you guys can see this real quick. I'm gonna move this over to the left just so you can see what it looks like. But you can set slices at plus or minus 15%, plus or minus 10, eight lower, six higher, that's kind of like a little bit of a skew. You can do a one standard deviation move up or down, a two, a three, et cetera. You can do break even prices, you can do whatever you want, okay? So the default I think is plus or minus 10%. Uh, so you can always click like reset on the slices and that'll reset the price slices to whatever you want. So, but again, get, you can kind of customize and order it as much as you want. But this gives you an idea like, hey, look, if OIH was to move down 10%, we'd be losing about $250, right? So that's how much money we'd lose. If OIH moved up to 10%, we you know should be about break even or so, really won't affect us, okay? So that's kind of how that works. The actual numbers up here, and then I'll get to the actual payoff diagram, the numbers up here show you the probability of the stock landing in the money at expiration, right, between these two price slices, okay? So now you can start to see that it's got all these probability numbers up here. And there's about a 38% chance that it lands between the current stock price and here. And a 43% chance it lands between this price and this price, okay? So that's what these numbers basically represent, is they represent the probability of the stock landing in between these zones. Now there's a probability of about 8.5% that the stock lands anywhere below this kind of left-hand price slice and about a nine and a quarter percent that the stock lands anywhere above this top price slice, okay? So now watch what happens though, because when you change these price slices, notice how the probability goes up or down based on what you're doing. So as I change this and slide it, right, it just kind of recalculates on the fly. So if you said, you know, look, I think there's a good chance it's gonna land between 26 and whatever, right? 26 and 32. Okay, well, great. Well, now you can add these two together and think, fig figure out, you know, kind of what the probability is of maybe your assumptions playing out or how much money you think you might win or whatever the case is, okay? So again, you can always go back down here and reset the slices to the chart if you want to. So when you actually, uh, let me do this first instead of doing the price slices. The next thing that you'll see here are two lines on the payoff diagram. Now this is where it gets really important. The green line here is your PNL at expiration. Now I will be totally honest with you guys when I do videos and training and stuff like that, this is the line that I'm worried about most of all. I am worried about the P&L at expiration, which is this green line here on your chart. That is truly how much money you make or win, make or win or lose or whatever the case is at expiration, when everything's said and done and we reach that final expiration date. And this is important because ultimately, if we need to give the stock time all the way through expiration to turn around, this is why we always look at this line first. The line that's in purple is your daily P&L. So this line is not the same as your expiration line. This is how your payoff diagram looks given any price movement in the stock today, okay? So this line takes into account the fact that there is still some time decay value, some volatility value in these options. And so it shows you what your P&L could be at any price point, right? So any price point in the stock, no matter where the stock would move, today. That's why this has down the bottom left hand corner here, it's got two dates. It's got today's date and then expiration date. Now it might be hard to see, but today's date that I'm doing this video is 327, expiration is 422. Okay, so here's how it works, right? The current stock price right now is 90, I'm sorry, 29.42, right? And that means that we're making a little over $100 right now on the position. As it stands right now, if we were to close out the position right now, we'd make a little over $100. If we waited until expiration, we'd make about $325 or so, okay? So this difference here in premium is basically time decay and volatility. So think about it logically like this. If the stock were to stay exactly where it is between now and expiration, which is still almost a month away, that difference in decay is just basically time decay and premium decay, okay? So as we go forward in time, this payoff diagram is gonna to start to mold and bend and shape until it becomes the shape of 
the green payoff diagram at expiration. Okay, so it does move and change. Now one way you can visually see this, just so you can see, is if we do what's called day steps. So if we do four day steps, watch what happens to the purple chart here. It will overlay four different lines on top of it that show you the payoff at different expiration points. So let me just make this really big so you can see what it looks like here. And I'll kind of scale this chart here. So now you can see these different expiration lines. They correspond with different dates on the left-hand side. So we have 327 and then 43, 410, 47, 424. So notice how the payoff diagram starts to rise and meet up kind of like with what the eventual payoff will be, this pyramid shape at expiration, right? So it just kind of bends and molds and shapes as you get through your expiration cycle, okay? So I just wanna show you guys how that kind of works. Now that also means that let's say the stock today for some reason trades from 29.41 all the way down to around 26. So let's say just for whatever reason, stock goes down three and a half dollars randomly. That means today we will lose about $250. If we held that position all the way through expiration, we lose, lose about $350. So again, this helps you make decisions about what you want to do. If you want to stay into it, if you want to adjust it, you know, how much it's really going to cost you if you hold on to the position, et cetera. Okay, so it's really important to know that difference. Again, my my biggest takeaway here is that I always focus on the PL diagram at expiration. That's what I'm most concerned with, obviously, is PL at expiration. The last two things I want to really cover in this part of it are these red lines here. These are your break-even points. Again, they create two break-even points for you the break-even point today and the break-even point at expiration. So noticeably, our break-even points on the daily move in uh, OIH is much less or much more tight than the break-evens at expiration. So again, just giving you the idea or the concept again that at expiration we get some time decay, some volatility decay, and that helps the position have a potentially wider break-even point uh, to make money from, okay? So hopefully that helps out. Again, it will basically total up all of your positions that you have in a particular security. So if you have uh, multiple positions, I think we have multiple positions in XRT right now. Um, yeah, so it'll bend and shape these payoff diagrams. So you know exactly where you are, right? Like XRT right now, we're making like $12.00. But if we hold on to it, because it's right exactly where we want, kind of in our profit range, at expiration, we should make about four, uh, $415 or so. So right now, XRT is doing good, just hasn't decayed enough in value to actually realize a profit, but it's right where we want it to be. Okay, so very, very easy to do. When you're actually looking at this analyze tab and this risk profile, if you scroll this chart up on the bottom, you have a lot of different stuff down here that you can look at. So again, I just wanna go through here so you understand we have the price slices, which we'll talk about here in a second, and then we have our positions and simulated trades. Now this is where you can see the difference between a real trade and a simulated trade. In this case, what I've done here is I've shown all so that there's all of our positions that we have, but if I wanted to hide, let's say a simulated trade that I was looking at, I could do hide simulations. In this case, I don't have any simulated trades, so this is the only real position we have. If I want to hide a position, we could just hide positions and just look at a simulation for OIH. So if I was looking at a brand new position, maybe I'd hide the existing one I have so that it doesn't clutter up my, my analysis, right? Um, you can choose different expiration dates. If you have different expiration dates, you can choose to beta weight your portfolio, which we go over in a different video. We only do that really with like a major market index. Um, and then you can, again, you know, change the dates and change the impact on kind of this model up here on positions, okay? Uh, one thing that you can do is if you ever wanted to delete all your simulated trades, you just go over here to the right side, say delete simulated, and it's all done. You can basically reset all, everything from there um, as well, okay? So very, very easy to use. On the price slices here, this is where you could if you wanted to adjust the slices one by one. So notice as I just kind of click up here and price slice, it moves that right hand side uh, price slice. Again, I think the default here is about 10% up or down. You can change these if you want to. You can do a one standard deviation, just simply click and change them and they'll move back and forth so you can see exactly what it looks like. But ultimately it's up to you how you want to determine those price slices. And again, what's really cool here is that you can see, okay, how would my PL be affected not only today if that move happened, but also at expiration. How much money would I make or lose depending on 10% move up or down in the stock price. Okay, so really, really powerful stuff that you have inside of the risk profile here on Thinkorswim. So I think that pretty much wraps up the video that we have here. If you guys have any questions on this, please add them in the comment section right below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, thought it was helpful in any way, please consider sharing it. Help spread the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha. And until next time, happy trading.